Hello everyone, welcome to Legal Darshan. In today's video, we will talk about various kind of maintenance that are available under Hindu laws to women. So we will uh, start with Hindu Marriage Act. We will also look at Section 18 and 19 of Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act. And also we will look at Section 125 CRPC and Domestic Violence Act to see where women can claim maintenance with special reference to Hindu law. So first, we will look into the provisions of Hindu Marriage Act. It is uh, important to tell you that uh, there are two sections in Hindu Marriage Act, Section 24 and Section 25, as visible on the screen. Yes. So Section 24 and Section 25 talks about the maintenance. But what is the speciality of these two sections is that these are gender neutral. Okay, so here the Hindu Marriage Act only deals with the matters related to marriage and divorce. Now, if a Hindu couple is has filed for divorce and um, the proceedings are pending, Section 24 will be attracted. Now, Section 24 says, where in any proceedings under this act, it appears to the court that either the wife or the husband as the case may be, has no independent income sufficient for her or his support and the necessary expenses of the proceeding, it may on the application of the wife or the husband order the respondent to pay to the petitioner the expenses of the proceeding and the monthly during the proceeding such sum as having regards to the petitioner's own income and the income of respondent, it may seem to the court to be reasonable provided that the application for the payment of the expenses of the proceeding and such monthly sum during the proceeding shall as far as possible be disposed of within 60 days from the date of service of notice on the wife or husband as the case may be. This section tells us that if a Hindu couple has a divorce proceeding, any spouse, wife be and husband bhi, jo ki financially well off nahi hai, jiske paas apna income ka independent source nahi hai, ki wo proceedings ka, divorce proceedings ka kharcha utha sake, wo dusre partner se uh, maintenance claim kar sakta hai during the proceeding. Wo kharcha claim kar sakta hai, jo kharcha litigation ke liye, divorce ke proceeding ke liye, ya koi bhi proceeding ke liye under this act, jo bhi kharcha aa raha hai, and jo partner, either wife or husband, who is who is in the financial instability, instability, or uh, does not has a very good source of income, he can pe uh, file a petition under this section. And the other pa other partner who will be the respondent, he has to pay the maintenance to this person to the pers petitioner who has claimed the pendentility that he will be giving him the maintenance. So if Mr. X marries Mr. Y, Mrs. Y and they are in a divorce proceeding and Miss, Miss, Mrs. X is earning 1 lakh rupees per month, whereas Mr. X is earning 45,000 per month, Mr. X is in the position to claim the cost of proceedings, the expenses of divorce proceedings from Mrs. Y. Okay, so but this is only section 24 only applies till there is a pending litigation. Ye kharcha, ye minimum expense jo court award karega husband ko ya wife ko wo sirf usi vakt ke liye diya jayega jis vakt wo proceedings chal rahi hai. For example, do saal tak agar case chala to keval do saal ke liye ye pendente lite maintenance diya jayega. Pendente lite ka matlab hi yahi hai that your case is pending and usi ke liye aapko kharcha diya ja raha hai. You are being given the expenses. So here, when Mr. X will file a case under Section 24 that my wife should bear my expenses of the divorce proceedings, the court will look at what both of their income is. And then court will decide a reasonable amount which Mrs. X will give to Mr. X as the expense of the proceeding. Now, it is a mandate on the court that it should try to dispose of the case under section 24 
within 60 days from the date of notice. So when Mr. X will give notice to Mrs. Y that I am filing the case under section 24 of the Hindu Marriage Act, within 60 days of that date of giving notice, the court should decide this application. This is section 24. Section 25 is permanent alimony and maintenance. Now this is your maintenance after divorce. Once a Hindu couple gets divorced, either husband or wife who is in lesser side of the financial stability, who does not has any independent sufficient income for the support. Now section 25 is also gender neutral. But this the difference in section 24 and 25 is Section 24 only applies when there is pendency of litigation of any proceedings that can happen under this Act. Whereas in Section 25, when divorce is granted, right, after that, either husband or wife may apply for the maintenance. So alimony and maintenance can be granted by court from the partner who is financially well off to the partner who has no independent sufficient income right so e even in this case the present income will be considered and a reasonable uh, amount may be awarded to the person who files a case under section 25 all right but there are some conditions okay now there are some conditions uh, under which maintenance would be granted uh, in this section so if the court is satisfied that the party in whose favor an order has been made has remarried. Okay, if there is a remarriage, then the court may modify the order. And if it is visible to the court that if wife is claiming maintenance and there is a question of chastity involved, she is unchaste, then also the court has the option to rescind, modify or vary the decree by which it awarded the permanent alimony. So section, basically the two sections of Hindu Marriage Act, which are talking of maintenance, they are only talking in terms of the proceedings that are going on under Hindu Marriage Act. It could be the proceeding of divorce. It could be the proceeding of voidable marriage. Or it could be the proceeding of obtaining nullity to the marriage. Any proceeding that may go under this act, during that section 24 can be attracted to claim maintenance for the expense of the litigation. Whereas section 25 talks about post-divorce alimony and maintenance, which can be given by the court looking at various conditions. So the main point of contention which these two sections from Hindu Marriage Act are making are that these are only limited to the marriage and divorce affairs, right? Now, let's move to what Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act is saying. Let's have a look, okay? So, Chapter 3 of the Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act, Section 18, talks about maintenance of the wife. So, a Hindu wife, whether married before or after the commencement of this act, shall be entitled to the maintain to be maintained by her husband during her lifetime. Now, when we were talking about section 24 and 25 of the Hindu Marriage Act, that section was not gender neutral, whereas that section was gender neutral. Both husband and wife could claim the maintenance, whereas this section 18 of Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act this section is specifically made for a Hindu wife. So, she shall be entitled to be maintained by her husband during her lifetime. Clause 2 says, a Hindu wife shall be entitled to live separately from her husband without forfeiting her claim to maintenance if he is guilty of desertion, that is to say of abandoning her without reasonable cause or and without her consent or against her wishes or of willfully neglecting her. Or if he has treated her with cruelty so as to cause a reasonable apprehension in the mind that it will be harmful or injurious to live, injurious to live with, the, with her husband. If he has any other wife living, if he keeps a concubine in the same house in which his wife is living or habitually resides with a con concubine elsewhere, if he has ceased to be a Hindu by conversion, if there is any other cause justifying her living separately. So this section is basically saying 
हिंदू वाइफ हमेशा एंटाइटल्ड रहेगी टिल द टाइम ऑफ हर डेथ टू बी मेंटेन्ड बाय हर हस्बैंड शी इज एंटाइटल्ड नाउ अ हिंदू वाइफ even if a hindu wife is living separately that will not forfeit her claim of maintenance under this section lekin wo jo reason hai of living separately wo sirf inhi causes pe based hona chahiye number first agar husband desert kar raha hai wife ko agar husband ne wife ko abandon kar diya hai that i will not live with you in that case women can live separately and also claim maintenance and if the husband is neglecting her willfully neglecting her then also wife can live separately as well as she can claim maintenance second is that there is cruelty wife husband wife ke sath cruelty kar raha hai mental cruelty physical assault anything jisse wife ko lagta hai ki wo uske sath nahi reh sakti it will be a, re, a, a harmful it will be harmful or injurious to live with that person in that case wife can live separately and also claim maintenance if the husband has other wife living which means that if husband is doing bigamy then also the wife can live separately and claim maintenance if he is keeping a concubine if there is a concubine associated with the husband that is also a type of cruelty under hindu law to an existing wife and therefore the wife can live separately and also claim maintenance if the husband ceases to be hindu and converts to another religion wife can live separately and claim maintenance and if there is any other cause that justifies her living separately even then she can live separately and also she can claim maintenance but when she will not be entitled to claim maintenance is if she becomes unchaste or she ceases to be a hindu by conversion so if a hindu wife converts to some other religion or she is unchaste then she cannot claim maintenance under this section so this section was specifically for hindu wife which is giving her the right to ask maintenance from the husband section 19 speaks of maintenance of widowed daughter in law so a hindu wife whether married before or after the commencement of this act shall be entitled to the to the maintenance after the death of her husband by her father in law now uh to what extent is she entitled so if she is unable to maintain herself if for example if a widow is earning 1 lakh per month then she may be entitled to maintain herself right but if she is only earning 10000 then she might need help from her father in law to for for her maintenance so first condition is that you should be unable to maintain yourself out of your own earnings okay now if for example this is women a who is a widow this is women b who is getting 10000 salary plus 40000 rent so she is earning almost 50000 40000 rent from some property she owns now this is also accounted while granting maintenance under this section okay so a, when you give maintenance to a widow daughter in law you will see what are her assets how much is she earning then only you will grant the maintenance okay so now from where she will get the maintenance from the estate of her husband sorry uh yes so this uh, property she can also obtain maintenance from the property of her husband of her own parents from of her children also but if she is not a, this property from which we are talking about rent this could be the property of her husband of her father or mother even of her children but if she has nothing like this any estate anything then in that case she can go to her father in law and claim maintenance right now these were the sections in hindu adoption and maintenance act now uh we will move to section 125 of the crpc so section 125 of the crpc is a general section it is a secular section okay we can use the word it is a secular section now when we were talking of section 18 in hama and section 24 and 25 in hindu marriage act those only apply to hindus they were the special provisions only for hindus whereas section 125 is the secular provision which says if any person having sufficient means neglects 
or refuses to maintain his wife unable to maintain herself now we are only going to focus on this particular section because we are talking about the maintenance uh, given to wives now section 125 crpc says that maintenance will only be given if the wife is unable to maintain herself when we saw section 18 of the hindu adoption and maintenance act it was an absolute it was an absolute uh, provision that women will always be entitled to maintenance irrespective of the fact that whether she has any source of maintenance or not okay so when we read this section here a hindu wife shall be entitled to be maintained by her husband during her lifetime whereas section 125 crpc reads if the wife is unable to maintain herself so this is one difference between section 125 crpc and hindu adoption and maintenance act so if the person if the husband is unable to maintain his wife sorry is unable to give maintenance to his wife who is unable to maintain herself then the magistrate may order a monthly allowance for the maintenance of the wife okay now this uh, section we talked the difference between both the th all the three provisions that we discussed is hindu marriage act speaks of hindu marriage act is speaking of only the maintenance during divorce or during uh, proceedings of divorce or voidable marriages section 18 of hindu adoption and maintenance act is giving A, a, an absolute right to women to claim the maintenance whereas section 125 crpc is a secular section which is not restricted to any religion any any religion women from any religion can claim maintenance under section 125 clause a sub clause, uh, clause 1 sub clause a right now also we have one domestic violence act i will just uh, use the white board and tell you so even in domestic violence act there is a provision of granting interim maintenance to the women during the proceeding is going on okay so in we have four kind of provisions domestic violence also we have hindu marriage act section 24 and 25 which talks of giving maintenance which is the gender neutral section we also have hindu adoption and maintenance act which is section 18 for specifically wives right and section 19 for widows from which they can claim maintenance and in crpc we have section 125 clause 1 sub clause a which speaks of wives maintenance right now the difference we have already discussed there is one question that often arises is can now the women the wives they are having so many rights right now uh, if only we we'll, if we look at these provisions only hindu marriage act is a gender neutral provides a gender neutral provision for the maintenance after divorce or during the proceedings of divorce or any other proceedings under the hindu marriage act but the question is that whether the women hindu wife now domestic violence act is also a secular law and crpc is also a secular law so the question that often arises is that can women claim bo uh, both the provisions to seek maintenance for example can a woman file case under both these sections saying that she files crpc claiming 25000 and then she will also file under hama claiming 25000 is it possible so the answer is no because the courts have many times said that these two provisions go together right if you are claiming under crpc your claim under hama will fail right and if you are claiming under hama your claim under crpc might fail now the courts will see that how much of the money are you demanding for example if husband is earning 50000 and wife says i want 35000 for my maintenance the court will not grant that because if a person himself is earning 50000 and he is having a lot of responsibilities on his shoulder the court will not allow the wife to take 35000 so the court is going to consider the income right these provisions it is to note that these provisions 
were made to secure the interest of women and not to exploit the interest of men so if there is a litigation under both these sections the court will consider them simultaneously it's not that the women will get 50000 she might get 30 arising out of these two cases but she will not get both the claims done right so i hope uh, this video has cleared your concepts on maintenance we will uh, be meeting more for such shorts and short and crisp concepts i hope you like this video thank you for watching please like share and subscribe and stay tuned with us at legal darshan thank you very much